yellow jaundice in 1976. But what the doctors didn't know when she was given a full blood transfusion at only a couple days old was that the donor carried a dormant gene known as the silent killer. From the first butterfly rash in 1872 to 1 1.5 million people diagnosed with this disease every year. This silent killer's name is lupus. I chose this topic because it's important for people to learn so that they can reduce their risks and know that there are things that can trigger this disease to become active. I have lived with lupus for 18 years now, and I'm a survivor. And I have done a lot of research on this so that I can share my knowledge with people so that they can know the symptoms and signs. So today we're going to be answering three questions. If you look at my chart over here, what is lupus? The symptoms of lupus and is there a cure? So the first question is, what is lupus? According to the Lupus Foundation of America, lupus is, again back in my chart, the definition, a chronic autoimmune disease. Chronic means lasting more than six weeks at a time, and in this case, a lifetime. Okay, this is not just a six week flu or something like that. It's a disease you carry for the rest of your life until you die. Autoimmune means auto means self. And in this disease, it tricks your body so that it, it affects itself, okay? So it attacks its own healthy tissue. Um, and the, the antibodies, they destroy all of this stuff inside your body, and it's a permanent thing. It causes inflammation in the joints, pain, and a lot of damage to the organs and the skin. This makes what feels like a common cold to somebody who's a healthy person who doesn't have this disease or, you know, just a random person. I mean, it makes that feel like the dying plague to somebody who's diagnosed with this. Um, this is not like AIDS or HIV, which in those which are immune diseases also, your immune system is very underactive. It doesn't fight off any diseases at all. Lupus is the exact opposite of that. You're immune deficient. Your immune sorry, your immune disease is where your immune system is overactive. So it's just attacking everything, including bacteria, and it gets confused. Lupus goes back and forth between remissions, which is where you're feeling better and you feel okay, to flare-ups where you're feeling sick and you get worse. It's not contagious and it's carried through blood. Um, it's not hereditary, but the kids of somebody who has lupus has that gene in their blood, it just lays dormant and there's things that can trigger that to become active and to awaken. Many things can cause a kind of uh, trigger of the dormant gene, like ultraviolet rays and sun exposure, which is why I don't tan, because that stuff, it really, it's really effective for people with lupus. Um, infections, being sick or a really serious injury, Emotional stress, being pregnant or giving birth are also some triggers that cause the dormant gene to become active. Um, some of the symptoms, if we we'll look back here, I put a few on here already. Fever, anemia, the butterfly rash, which is, it goes from your cheeks across your nose to your other cheek. Hair loss, swelling of your hands, feet, any kind of joint in your body can swell, lots of inflammation, a lot of pain. Um, another big one is seizures. For people with, that have very severe cases of lupus, they'll have seizures sometimes. <clears throat> and um, fatigue and fever with a, without any cause. Um, there, another symptom that is very well known is placeria. And I don't know if you guys have ever heard about that, but that's ch chest pain when you breathe, especially when you breathe deep. It makes it really painful for people with lupus to lay down. Because when you lay down, it just it feels like somebody's sitting on your chest all the time. And 90% of the 1.5 million diagnosed with lupus are women. Okay, ladies, so that's very important for you to know that there are triggers, and it's mostly common in women, not men. Um, so the best way to prevent a trigger or a flare-up is to talk to your doctors and get support from them and your friends and family. Um, learn about lupus, learn about what causes it and what are the things you can do to stop it. Reduce your stress. Try not to take on too much at work or too much at school. And try to like minimize that so you're not too stressed out. And eat healthy and become active. You know, we want you to regurgite, regularly exercise. The big question about this silent murderer is, is there a cure? 
and sadly there isn't a cure right now. Um, but we are becoming more experienced with this disease and people every morning have to struggle to get up out of bed because it's just so painful or fighting back. And so doctors are learning more about this disease and according to Lupus Fact Sheet on Women's Health Government, we discovered effective treatments like anti-inflammatories and some very mild clap and very mild cases. You can take an anti-inflammatory, it reduces the inflamed joints, reduces the pain, so you can become more active. And in some severe cases, chemotherapy is sometimes given. Um, it's just really important to be good to your body. It's important not to overwork or overstress yourself and to eat right and exercise, like I said. Now that you've learned that lupus is a chronic autoimmune disease, you have also learned the symptoms from mild headaches to severe seizures, and finally you have learned that there is no cure. You can take all this and you can go share it with people so that they can be knowledgeable. So that maybe one day you can become a lupus survivor or share the knowledge with a lupus survivor, and we can find a cure to this silent killer.